Let's go over another theorem which is especially useful in modular arithmetic on the AMC 1012. And this is known as Fermat's theorem. And this might seem a little bit unusual to you because it doesn't exactly relate so much to what we've been doing. But what it states is, if we have some number a, then we have a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. And this actually relates to more exponents and algebraic congruencies. So basically what this tells us is, say we have some prime number p. p has to be some prime number. Let's say p is equal to 5. Then we have all numbers a, that a to the power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5. So for example, if we plug in a equal to 1, we'll get 1 to the power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5, which we know is true because 1 is 1 mod 5. Let's set a equal to 2, then we have 2 to the power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5. 2 to the power 4 is 16. 16 is congruent to 1 mod 5. If we set a equal to 3, we get 3 to the power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5. And 3 to the power 4 is 81, and 81 is congruent to 1 mod 5. And if you keep on doing this, you'll see all of this works. So therefore, we have this equation is true, where any number a is congruent to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, where p is a prime. Now the proof for this is a lot more complicated, and I won't really go over it here, but this formula is something which you should definitely keep in mind. When it asks you to solve congruencies, or modular arithmetic statements, with exponents, because this especially helps with exponentations. Now I just want to briefly go over something known as the Euler's Totian Theorem and Function which won't really show up too much on the AMC 10 and 12 and mostly on the AMI, which is why I won't exactly be covering it too much in this course or in this lecture right here. So, but just to briefly cover it in case it does become useful, is it states a to the power of phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n, where this symbol here stands for phi. And what phi of n over here is, is all of the numbers less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n. And the reason why we have this is it looks pretty similar to Fermat's little theorem. However, in this case, n is any integer that is not equal to a. So n does not have to be prime. So for example, let's suppose n is 100 and a is 7. Then we have 7 to the power of phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n, or if we substitute n equals 100 in here, we get 7 to the power of phi of 100 is congruent to 1 mod 100. And if you calculate phi of 100, which you should probably memorize if you're taking the AIME, but AMC 1012, you don't really need to, I just want to briefly go over this, is phi of 100 is 40. So you have 7 to the power of 40 is congruent to 1 mod 100. And this also works for any prime, which also brings us back to Fermat's old theorem, because phi of some number of some prime p is always equal to p minus 1, because by this definition, all numbers less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n. And since p is already prime, it'll pretty much be all integers that are unequal to n, except for p. So you have phi of p is equal to p minus 1, which again gives you a to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. In this case, n is some prime p, which is brings us back to Fermat's little theorem.